Hi, this is Lou Anne Gilmore with the Gilmore Group and Keller Williams Realty Atlanta Perimeter. Thank you for tuning in today to my Park Bench community site, all about local area businesses, organizations, and of course, real estate in Dunwoody and Sandy Springs. Today we are featuring Carbonara Trattoria, and with me our owner and founder, Rafiq, and son and manager, Patrick Prasadi. Step inside and let's learn all about this fabulous restaurant. Thank you for joining me today, Rafiq. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming back. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I have a few questions for you today that I think everybody will want to know about. Um, to begin with, what made you start, or what made you want to get into the restaurant business and open Carbonara's? Well, it's funny you should ask because I, when I moved back to the U.S. from overseas, um, there was a favorite Italian restaurant on Roswell Road uh, that we would go to two or three times a week. And then over a weekend, it just closed. Um, and then to find a good Italian restaurant, I had to drive to Buckhead. So, um, and I just didn't want to drive to Buckhead. And I said, you know, I can do the same thing and bring bring good Italian food to the, to the community and Sandy Springs and Dunwoody and Brookhaven without having to drive downtown. Um, and it worked, uh, and that was the that was sort of the driving element. Yes. The other one is that you know I had to find a job because my wife didn't want me at home. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, I, I think that answers my second question too. Is just why did you choose the Dunwoody community for your restaurant? Well, you know, again, you know, I worked for Coca Cola, and that was sort of the normal um, extension is where you're going to live after you leave Coke, and. Um, I lived in Dunwoody, and Dunwoody was the place. And and when my wife asked me to go find a job, I just came out and drove around and yeah. found this place and got the real estate to come in and talked. And mm -hmm. three weeks later, I went home and says, "Honey, guess what? We have now a restaurant." <laughs> and that was it. Well, so, we're all glad you did. That's thank for you. sure. Thank you. Well, Rafik, this year has been a tough year for restaurants, and it's just been tough with everything that you had to go through with COVID and the shutdown in the spring. Tell us some of the things that you did to keep afloat and to survive. Uh, survive, actually. Um, it, was a t it was tough because the whole business plan, you know, um, again, when I worked for Coca Coach for General Motors, they teach you how to be write a business plan. And then if you follow through on your business plan, then you'd be successful. If you don't deviate from the business plan, except for the little tweaks every now and then. So all of a sudden this, this pandemic hits us, we shut down and then we have to learn to adapt to a new uh, business model, which is the, take the takeouts. Before the pandemic, we had maybe one or two or three orders on a weekend and that's about it. But after the pandemic, it went from one or two or three to a hundred. Um, so we- night? Yeah. Wow. So we had to sort of adjust really fast if you wanted to take advantage of of, of the situation, and um, and that's that. It's not as easy as people think. I had to get some new staff in the kitchen. I had to get some new packaging. Mm -hmm. um, but we made it. We uh, again, you know, it's just uh, perseverance. Perseverance, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know. That's great. Yeah. What is something that most people don't know about your restaurant? Yeah. When you when you walk in here, you from the moment you walk in, you feel at home. Whether it's the colors of the paint of the wall, whether it's the uh, the staff at the door, uh, you feel at home. And then when you start, you see all your friends in here. And it becomes sort of an old, like the old series painting place where people come in and talk and meet their friends and they haven't seen in a couple of weeks and yeah. just chat. And and then you've got the the element of of the owner coming to the table and ask how everything is. Um, is the food, if their food, is their food okay? Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think that they were used to that. And then you, 
once you walk away from a table, you treat, you treat that table as special. Mm -hmm. These are special guests. They're coming into your home because I spend more time here than I spend at home. And they expect to be treated as special. Yeah. So once you accomplish that, then then that's the specialness of, the, mm -hmm. of this place. It's, it's the warmth of it. It's the good food, of course. And it's the conversation. Yeah. It's, it's the meeting place for, for Dunwoody and Sandy Springs. You know, another thing that your waiters do really well here that I love is that they, like you said, they take care of you. They come in and check on how you're doing, but they don't try to take over your conversation. You know, they they know you came to be with your friend or spouse, um, not to have dinner with them. Yeah. And some restaurants don't quite get that. <laughs> well, funny you should say that because my wife and I used to go to a restaurant and I will not name it. Um, and the owner, who I've known for 20 years, every time we went, he'd come in and say hello and pull a chair and sit down and yeah. and, and chat and, you know, and get a drink. And my wife would look at me and she says, did we come here to have dinner together? No. Or did we come here to have dinner with the owner? Right. So I, I see your point. And I, make, and I make it a point that I never sit with the guests at the table. Never do. And they'll say, come on, sit down. You know, we're asking you to sit down. I said, no, I said, because if I sit down with you, I have to sit down with everybody else. Uh -huh. So I make it a point and I'm very aware yeah. of that uh, that point you just raised. Because at the end of the day, you come here to be with your partner mm -hmm. and you want to enjoy that relationship. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> what would you say that your customers love most about Cabernera? Well, again, as, as I said earlier, it's the it's the warmth when you walk in here, the, uh, the, whole, the whole environment. Um, it's friendly, uh, it's professional, and the food is absolutely superb. And it's beautiful. And yeah, well, you know, that goes to my wife who decorated the place. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, um, it's a combination. It's, it's everything you want to do, but you can't do at home. I had an older Austrian couple um, and they used to come in and they lived in Dunwoody and they would come in and they said, and the lady would say to me, I now feel like I'm in Europe as soon as she walks into the door. Because this is exactly what they do overseas. Yes. Um, and that was the biggest compliment I could ever get because that's exactly mm -hmm. the point I wanted to transmit is that you are leaving Dunwoody, coming into the sort of the old world European. And then when you leave, you leave, you leave the, European and going back into the other one. So I think that that is the that is the, the specialness of this place. I totally agree. You know? I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about some of your favorite menu items that you serve. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you how we came to develop our first menu. After my wife sort of calmed down about and and bought the idea of becoming a restaurant owner. We sat around with the family at home and, you know, I had three kids and they were not married back then, but no, I think my oldest boy, boy was. And I said to them, what do you want, you know, what would you want on the menu? And we went around the table twice and we picked some menu items. Uh, my wife said she wanted the salmon. Uh, I wanted the penne rabiata. Uh, my son wanted a steak. And, and we sort of developed the menu like that. And when I went to look for a chef, he wanted to put his own menu. I said, no, I mean, yeah, this is the menu that you're gonna cook from. Are you willing to play ball or not? Uh, so that was that was the initial menu. Uh, we've developed ever since then, but, but if you look at the original menu and today's menu, mm -hmm. the basics are the same, the salmon, the steak, the pastas. The veal, the I veal. love your veal. I mean, you know, I just, that's, that's my, that's my to-go-to meal, is the veal. Have you ever had any odd requests from customers? Odd, no. Uh, but invariably, when the chef makes a menu, he picks the, the right combination of foods. What goes good with fish, what goes good with steak, what goes with the red sauce and the white sauce and what have you. But invariably, 10 out of 10 people that come in to eat will modify the plate. One doesn't want the potatoes, they want pasta, the other one doesn't want the pasta, wants risotto, the other one doesn't <laughs> want the risotto, they want vegetables. 
-hmm. So every everything that goes into the kitchen is is your basic element is there, but it's completely different than what the chef has originally inside. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, he was he did not appreciate that because that's extra time for him to cook in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. But as the time went by, he just learned to live live with it. And as a matter of fact, when an order comes in, say salmon, he will come out and say salmon what? I mean. What do you want with the salmon? And they said, like, it's the way it's in the menu. Oh, okay. You know, so <laughs> it's, it's a was, surprise. It, yeah. <laughs> so really, it's ability to, for, for people funny. to get what they want. That's right. What are some new things that you may have planned for the new year um, that you want the community to know about? Well, besides getting over the pandemic and getting everybody healthy and eager to come out again, we are, and I guess, it doesn't look like we will get there before June, July. By the time they get the vaccines or what have you, looking at June, July for the common person to get it. Um, we have gone a step further. We have we are building the uh, the patio outside. We've already put the heaters and we are having uh, plastic walls put up. Um, so that's going to be our sort of feature for mm -hmm. for the first six months of the year. That's great. Um, and again, at the beginning of January, we that's when we launch our, our menu for the fall and for the winter and, and the spring. Mm -hmm. um, so these are the two items that we have to to address this year. Again, just getting over the pandemic is is our most yeah. most important thing, and have people come out and few people feel comfortable coming in here. Um, that's that's that to me is the number one. Uh, but you're providing outdoor seating so people can sit outside and feel safe and warm with correct. the partitions and the heaters. That's correct. But great. outside has so many, so much space, and then then what? So you always got to be ready on the inside as well. Right. And as you see, the restaurant we have so social distancing, um, and then when you come in, uh, when you come in, the servers have all masks and wear gloves and. So we are we are aware of the existing threat, mm -hmm. and we are aware of how people perceive the threat, and we try to work within it. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. This has been a pleasure. Thank you so much, Rafiq, for Thank joining me today. Thank you very much today. for coming back. Thank you very much. Yes. All right. Thank you. And if you would like your business to be featured on this community site for Dunwoody and Sandy Springs, contact me, and I'll be happy to arrange an interview with you. Or if you have any real estate needs, either buying or selling, let me know that too. This is Luann Gilmore with the Gilmore Group and Keller Williams Realty, opening doors for you.